All right, Star Wars fans and YouTubers, I'm here at a friend of mine's house watching my first video in about six months be uploaded to YouTube. Uh, this is going to be my second one. I did promise you in my last video I would address the issue of Star Wars and Star Trek. They're two of the biggest sci-fi franchises ever. Uh, a lot of comparisons made in the past few years, especially recently with J.J. Abrams. He just did Star Trek in the darkness, and he's apparently going to do the next three Star Wars. So there's especially a lot of comparisons lately. Um... I want to talk about it a bit. Basically, there are three Star Trek franchises. The original one with Captain Kirk. Uh, then there's kind of the Next Generation one with Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, as well as uh, Voyager. And the current one with Abrams. Um, yeah, having a, having a good friend that used to be part of the Star Trek community it kind of given me a perspective because he's given up on that. And, you know, seeing the movie with him gave me a good perspective as well. Uh, to start off with, uh, some of the big differences I see in between the two. Star Trek... Gene Roddenberry thinks that mankind, you know, if we ever encounter aliens, we're suddenly going to change. We're going to be on a higher level. You know, um, mankind is going to, you know, put a lot of the barbarism behind us that's been part of our past. Um, you kind of see, th there's an inside joke with a lot of trackies. They're basically communists wearing pajamas. That isn't necessarily uh, unfounded. You know, the, uh, Star Trek, especially in the next generation, and that area of it is, is basically... Uh, we run a utopian society, uh, fighting is a very last resort, and they always point out mankind, basically our era and back, as being just barbaric, and how they've, how they've risen to a higher plane since, um, since they've advanced in technology and found the existence of aliens and everything. Star Wars, I think, we can relate to as well, uh, much better as human beings now. Although, you know, I can't relate to John Luke Picard, but I can relate to Han Solo. A lot of us can, you know. I don't care what they say, Han did shoot first. Sometimes you've got to make those decisions. You know, no, no matter, regardless of our technological level, I, I think we're still going to be human beings. <laughs> um, I do. And I think that's why Star Wars characters are more believable. Sure, you can have science fiction with unbelievable technology, but once you accept that technology, you've got to be able to relate to the people in the movie. So I think Star Wars does a much better job than that. Although the new Star Wars with Abrams, um, I, I, I see a lot of a lot more uh, what current day humans would be like maybe in the future. I mean, it's a lot more militaristic. Uh, you know, I, I they, they really push that Starfleet is no longer, you know, primarily in exploration and uh, you know, uh, making contact and stuff. It's, it's more of a military installation. And um, this is addressed in the new Into Darkness movie. I mean, one thing about it, I noticed the uniforms they're wearing. Like, Spock almost looks like, you know, he has this huge military type hat on. It's like straight out of Stalinist Russia <laughs> with that hat. He's walking with Kirk in San Francisco. It, it, it's just a lot more military. And I see... I see Abrams, you know, he, he pretty much changed Star Trek a lot. A lot of the older trackies, are, they don't like the, what Abrams has done. But I think he's going to do all right. He's going to be better at writing Star Wars than he is Star Trek. He, so, you know, um, I think that's going to be a big change for the trackies. You know, uh, a couple of other things that uh, Star Trek and Star Wars, how they differ, is um, I think Star Wars, exploration has pretty much been done. And, you know... Meeting aliens and stuff is just like a common everyday thing. Uh, Star Trek, of course, there's the Federation, and they've got like all the different races they know about. They know about the Klingons, they know about the Romulans, they know about these different people. But they're still in the exploration stage, so a lot of stuff is new to them. And, you know, there's a lot of phenomena they find in space. I, I think that's another big difference between the two. Star Wars is, a lot of things in space are already to sad, but Star Trek, there's still kind of a mystery to what's out there. So I, th I think um, those are two interesting directions they've they've historically gone um let's see uh th there are some other differences between the two uh there's there's a lot of minor ones a lot of people try to compare the technology you know you, you get this all the time from track is you get these these mesh up videos where you know the captain kirk blows or Cap, captain picard blow up the death star or something with photon torpedoes uh a lot of track is trying to bash us with the technical level you, um you know i just want to say to them if you're going to try to attack me there uh star wars happened a long long time ago in a galaxy far far away and even at that time they had a lot of space exploration and star trek uh you know it's two or three hundred years advanced in our future or maybe it's i, I think it's 300 I think Picard and them might be four. I, I actually think Kirk is about 200 and some odd years, and Picard and beyond there is about 300. If I have, I probably have the dates a little bit wrong, but I think I'm in the ballpark. 
So, you know, uh, if you want to argue the technological level, you have to look at the fact that Star Wars had all this technology probably thousands of years ago. They were already pretty much established their hold on their galaxy. So, uh, consider that, Trackies. You know, when you're trying to bash us and make technological comparisons and things like that. Um, another thing that... Um, uh, another difference, uh, you know, uh, maybe you've noticed it, maybe you haven't. A lot of Star Trek is... Uh, they pretty much put religion behind them as people. I know I, I have Deep Space Nine. I actually got Deep Space Nine from my friend who used to be a, a diehard Deep Space Nine fan. I've been watching the series. Um, they don't re address religion that much in Star Trek. Basically, it's an atheist society, and they put religion behind them. I know, I know Bones, uh, you know, Dr. McCoy does mention religion some, and he says, my God, Jim, or, you know, he'll mention something from the Bible. And in Deep Space Nine, they, they addressed the religion a little bit. The Bajorans were religion. But they, they wanted to establish that even though they have a religion, uh, the religion were actually wormhole aliens. And Star Wars does address religion and um, a little bit more with the Force. I think the Force, I think the Force represents religion in some ways. I could be wrong here, but I honestly think it does uh, represent religion. And even though we're at such a technological level, there are still things beyond mankind's understand because very few people, you know, know, know what the Force is. You know, Han Solo said the best. He's been from one side of the galaxy to the other, but he's never seen some all binding force that brings the galaxy together. He said that, and you know, Obi Wan kind of opens his eyes to the Force throughout the... the uh, I, I know he dies in Episode 4, but Obi-Wan and Luke kind of open, open has eyes. I think he actually believes in the Force more uh, by Episode 6. But anyway, that's my take on it. You probably have seen, seen some differences between Star Trek and Star Wars. I want to know what you think. You know, this video is a bit late. I should have done this video a, right after Trek came out. I, I intended to go to the theater and make a special video there, like live at the, at the Anchorage Theater when we were watching this, but I didn't. Um, but, you know... It, as a Star Wars fan who's seen Star Trek, I want to know what you think out there. Tell me in the comment section or leave it or do a video response, all right? But anyway, this is Supreme signing out, and as always, thank you for tuning in.